All right, there it is. My Drake 2B receiver. I've had it since about 1973 or 1974. It's a wonderful receiver. It's a, it's a real keeper. Um, mine is uh, has been modified over the years. Some of the modifications were made by my Elmer, uh, Hilmar, Hilmar Meyer, WB2NEC. And he, he was the one who sold it to me. And he had, I think, modified, I think he was the one who modified the, uh, the dial. He put an additional reduction drive in there. So my uh, tuning needle does not move quite as fast as others do. And also when he put it in there, I lost the, uh, the skirt. There's a little, the, main, the regular 2Bs, unmodified 2Bs have kind of a skirt that goes around the knob. And it, and it gives you more accurate kind of uh, frequency change readings here. Uh, I don't have that. I've lived with it all these years. I think I'm okay with it. Um, some other modifications on, on the, uh, the socketry on the back performed by Hilmar. Now, one of the things that I did a few years ago, one of the maintenance things that I had to do, in addition to dial restringing, which I've done several times, one of the things I had to do was to recap the receiver, that is to change out the electrolytic capacitors that age over time and become um, poor filters for the AC power that's coming in. Now, I did this in a pretty haphazard slapdash way. I just got some uh, capacitors, the appropriate value, went in there and soldered them where they were supposed to be but they're kind of floating around in there and it's always kind of bothered me. And Pete Giuliano let me know recently, well, a while back, that there's a company that specializes in making replacement, proper looking replacements for the electrolytic capacitors in rigs like the Drake 2B. And the company is Hayseed Hamfest. There it is, there's their product. And this is the product that they produce specifically for the Drake 2B. And you can see it's got the right socketry, it's got the right values. About 35 bucks from hayseedhamfest.com in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, USA. And what I'm going to do here is uh, go back in there and take an advantage of some lockdown time. I guess this is a quarantine project. Go in there and replace the uh, haphazard electrolytic capacitor job that I did earlier and give this Drake 2B a proper looking replacement uh, power supply filter. Now the uh, Hayseed Ham Fest is really, they're really courteous folks. They send you not only the capacitor, there's another little additional capacitor that needs to go in there. But look at that, Pete was commenting about that. They even send you some solder wick to help you <laughs> remove the solder that was in there before. So anyway, I'll, uh, I'll try to produce some uh, videos here updating you guys on progress as I as I move through the recapping process here on the Drake 2B. All right, I've taken the, uh, the cabinet off the 2B and uh, you can already see the error of my ways. Look at this. This is where the cap is supposed to go. But look at this thing. It's just sort of floating around in there. I was obviously in a hurry to get this thing done didn't pay a whole lot of attention to doing it properly. Well, it's time to fix that. There you go. That's that's what we're going to have to do. The rest of the, the rest of the uh, the chassis looks okay. It's a it's a copper chassis. There's some corrosion on it here, and I've I've dusted it off a bit. I'm really not all that concerned about making it look really you know pretty or anything. I'm a kind of a functional restorer, so uh, we'll go in there now and start getting rid of this mess and replacing it with this beautiful looking thing from Hayseed Hamfest. Oh man, it's worse than I thought. I hang my head in shame. Look at this mess. Look at these floating electrolytics. Ooh, they're just float. Look, look at this thing. It's just floating in there. Ooh, that is really nasty. But, you know, I spotted something else as soon as I opened it up. Look at this capacitor here. One microfarad capacitor. <laughs> Looking 
quite ancient. It hasn't given me any trouble. I can see there's other caps in there that look like they're paper caps. And I think the, the, um, the purists out there recommend immediate replacement for these kind of paper caps, but they haven't given me any trouble. I don't notice any kind of hum or anything. These definitely gave me trouble at some point. So these are the ones we're gonna work on. But I think for now, I'm gonna leave those paper caps in there. Maybe we'll save that for, <laughs> for a future period of quarantine when we're looking for something to do, God forbid. But anyway, um, you can see I have my, well, I have my capacitors cut out for me, my work cut out for me too, but I'll, I'll have to replace all of that mess. All right, even in uh, boat anchor restoration, you have to do some noodling. Um, you know, it might seem like a simple thing just to take those other caps that I had in there and put in this one. But there are other parts in there, other bits of circuitry that you have to deal with. And it, it really pays to take a look at what you have, take a look at the part that you're going to put in there, and figure out how you're going to place things. So that's what I've been doing here. You can see, let's move this a bit here. Over here I have the... Uh, the schematic for the Drake 2B, and I've kind of highlighted the the capacitors that are going to go back in. There's some bleeder resistors off of each one of them, and there are some leads that are going to various parts of the circuitry. So obviously, when you're just dropping this capacitor in there, you've got to get it right. So I started studying this thing pretty closely, and drawing myself my own little diagrams here, and I ended up really with this, you can see the, um, the markings on the capacitor. And I have this oriented sort of how it's gonna go in relative to the case of the, of the Drake 2B, relative to where the parts were in the beginning. And I'm gonna start out just by putting a couple of the resistors across the terminals, and then just take the wires that are going to four different points in the circuitry and put them on the four different terminals of the um, of the, the new Hayside, Hayseed Hamfest uh, capacitor. There are a couple of tabs in there and I could see where they were just bent over and soldered to the chassis. And I could see the points where they were soldered in the chassis too. You could see them, I'll swivel over here a little bit, see if you can see that. Anyway, that's over in here. And you can see I'll just fold it over and, and solder them there. Anyway, that's, uh, the need for noodling, even when working on a minor repair or a minor bit of restoration with an old boat anchor receiver. All right, we're making progress. Got the two resistors in there, see? This is just gonna go in and up, and then I've got the four sets of wires that are gonna hook up to the four different terminals. I'll solder it up. And I will know whether Bob is my uncle. All right, kind of a mellow morning here. I got the Hayseed Hamfest capacitor in there. Hey, one thing I meant to show you guys is there's kind of a code, unless you don't know it. But you see these little figures here, like the half moon, the square, the triangle? Well, on, on the bottom of the capacitor, the terminals that are sticking out will have these right next to them. And that's why you, why you, that's how you can tell what's connected to that. And then there'll be one, the can itself is uh, hooked up to ground. Anyway, I'll show you what it sounds like here. Hold on a second. Let me turn off. Cosby Stills and Nash. Around 20 meters. Like the Drake 2B. Put down here the CW portion of the band. KD9CK calling CQ, banging in here. Get on the narrow position. 
And anyway, you can see the Hayseed Ham Hamfest capacitor doing a fine business job. That was fun.